Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the probability of or. Probability of one event or another should involve the union and addition. Remember when we learned in the set theory chapter that when we were trying to count the number of elements in the union of two sets, we said that you had to count the number in one set plus the number in the other and subtract off the overlap. For example, if this is a pair of sets A and B in the universal set U, and A contains 10 elements and B contains six elements, their overlap, the intersection contains four, then the number that would be in A union B, the two sets put together, would be the number in A, 10, plus the number in B, six, but that would be over counting the overlap, four. So we have to subtract off that four and we would get 12, which makes sense because six plus four plus two is 12. Well, the same idea works for probability. In fact, it gives us the addition rule of probability, which says that the probability of A or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both. We can actually use that same example and just imagine that um, we're drawing names out of a hat. There are 10 names that are from family A and six names from family B and four names are in both because people got married. So the probability of drawing a name from family A would be 10 out of the 13 elements in the universal set or in the hat. The probability of B would be six out of 13 probability of A and B both happening would be four out of 13. So the probability of A or B would be 10 thirteenths plus six thirteenths minus the overlap of four thirteenths, which would add up to 12 thirteenths, which makes sense because altogether there were 12 people in the families of A and B and only one person that was in neither family. So let's apply this idea to an example. When a single card is drawn from a standard 52 card deck, what's the probability that it will be a king or a diamond? Remember that in a standard deck of 52 playing cards, there are uh, four kings, one of each suit, and there are 13 diamonds, the ace of diamonds, the two of diamonds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, jack, queen, and king of diamonds. So to find the probability that we will get a king or a diamond, we have to count the number of, or we have to find the probability of drawing a king, the probability of drawing a diamond, and the probability of drawing both. Because the probability of a king or a diamond is the probability of a king plus the probability of a diamond minus the probability that it's both a king and a diamond. So what's the probability of drawing a king? Well, there are four kings out of the 52 cards. The probability of a diamond is 13 out of the 52. And there's only one card that's both a king and a diamond. That's called the king of diamonds. So there's a one out of 52 chance of getting that. One of the nice things about these problems is that the denominators are always already common denominators. So we have four over 52 plus 13 over 52 minus one over 52, you just add four plus 13 minus one and you get 16 over 52. And you should reduce to lowest terms. Four divides evenly into 16 and 52, so we get four thirteenths. Here's another example. If a single die is rolled, and I'm assuming it's a six-sided die, by the way, what's the probability of a two or an odd number? So in this case, these are what are called mutually exclusive events. A two is not odd and no odd is equal to a two. So there is no overlap. In this case, we can just find the probability of two and add to that the probability of getting an odd and not worry about subtracting off any overlap. So that's gonna be one six plus three six, which is four six, which reduces to two thirds. So in general, it's important to know this terminology. Two events A and B are mutually exclusive events if they have no outcomes in common. In other words, mutually exclusive events can't occur simultaneously. So when we apply the addition rule of probability, when we find the probability of A or B by adding the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both, if we have mutually exclusive events, there is no probability of both. The probability of both would be zero. So in that case, it simplifies the formula 
and the probability of A or B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. So in general, when we think about finding the probability of an OR, you want to think add, but be careful of any overlap. Here's an example from our My Math Lab homework. It says, if S is a set from 1 to 6, A is a set of elements of S that are less than 5, and B is the set of elements of S that are even, then find the probability that a single element chosen from S belongs to A or B. Well, first of all, if A is the set of elements of S that are less than 5, then that would mean A contains 1, 2, 3, and 4. And B is a set of even elements of S, so those would be 2, 4, and 6. If we want to find the probability of A or B, then we have to consider if they're mutually exclusive or not. These are not because there's overlap. So we're going to use the longer version of the formula for the probability of OR probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both. So we need to know what is both. Well, that's the overlap or the intersection of A and B, which is 2 and 4. So let's go ahead and find the probability. Probability of A, we're going to take 4 and divide it by 6. Probability of B, 3 sixths. And probability of both is 2 sixths. 4 sixths plus 3 sixths minus 2 sixths is going to give you 5 sixths. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.